All right, today I'm going to review with you transformations that you should have learned previously in pre-calc. I'm going to do it very quickly, so if you need to pause the video to write down what I write down or rewind it all, go for it. First thing, vertical shift. When you add C, it's up C unit. When you subtract C, it's down C unit. So if our parent function is what's up there instead of negative 6, 2, we have negative 6, negative 1. Instead of 0, negative 5, we have 0, negative 8. And instead of 4, 4, we have 4, 1. And that is our vertical shift of negative 3. Horizontal shift, remember our x's behave a little backwards. So this is actually going to move us not left. Right C unit, and this is going to be left C unit. So a plus 4 is going to move up left 4. So instead of negative 6, 2, it would be at negative 10, 2. Instead of 0, negative 5, it would be at negative 4, negative 5. And instead of 4, 4, it would be at 0, 4. And that would give us a horizontal shift of 4 to the left. Stretch and compress. This stretches vertically, where this one compresses vertically. So if we're trying to, this is going to stretch vertically by 2, meaning we're going to multiply our y values by 2. So instead of negative 6, 2, it's going to be negative 6, 4. Instead of 0, negative 5, it's going to be 0, negative 10. And instead of 4, 4, it will be 4, 8. All those y values multiplied by 2. Horizontally stretch and compress. Whole number inside with the x actually compresses by c. Compresses horizontally by c. And when we divide by c, that stretches horizontally by c. So this is going to compress horizontally by 2 which means we are going to divide our x values by 2. So, a point of negative 6, 2 becomes negative 3, 2, because I divided my x value by 2. 0, 5 would stay at 0, 5, because 0 divided by 2 is still 0. And 4, 4 would become 2, 4, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we get our horizontally compressed version of our graph. Reflecting about the x-axis. When your negative is out front, this reflects, oh, I can spell reflect, over x. And that's the x-axis. And when our x is just change sign, it reflects over the y-axis. So, notice it's negative f of negative x, so we're going to reflect over the y which means our negative 6, 2 will become positive 6, 2. Our 0, negative 5 will stay 0, negative 5 because it's on the y-axis. And our 4, 4 will become negative 4, 4. And that's our f of negative x. Absolute value. A couple situations here. One is when you absolute value the whole function or the y value. And one is when you absolute value the x. Pay attention closely. When we absolute value the y, that means there can be no negative y value. So, our points that are already above the x-axis will stay, and so will everything that is already positive. But anything that was below the x-axis, 0, negative 5, will reflect up above the x-axis, and so will all parts of that line. So nothing is negative. Anything that was below the x-axis reflects to be positive x-axis, and anything above the x-axis stays. Now, it's a little different when we absolute value the x's, because what happens
happens is when you plug in a positive x, you still get what was there. So when you plug in your positive x values, it stays exactly the same because an absolute value of a positive number is the same number. Now, when you absolute value the a negative x value, like a negative 3, that's identical to plugging in a positive 3. So, what you have on the right reflects over to be identical on the left because plugging in a 3 is like plugging in a negative 3. Plugging in a negative 2 is the same thing as plugging in a positive 2. Therefore, they would get the same y values. If you have questions, we can talk more about these tomorrow.